my sexy Dexter fans. So, welcome to my weekly Dexter vlog. And this week, of course, I'm going to be talking about the exciting intricacies of the latest episode, Swim Deep. And I, <laughs> I am finally coming up for air. I was pretty much underwater that entire episode, like, couldn't even breathe, you feel me? I mean, just after everything that had happened in, uh, in Run, the previous episode, and just everything that had been set up, this whole, you know, tension between Deb's acceptance and her fear of Dexter, and, you know, just the future of where they're going to be at, things with Hannah McKay, things with Isaac Circo, and everything, of course, was really uh, just expanded exponentially in this episode. Um, it was really beautiful and compelling, and I liked it in a different way from last week's episode. I, I can't tell which I like more, because there were so many intriguing new aspects that were really brought into the forefront in this episode. So. Um, Spoiler alert, before before I get too far in and I'm just going and going and then, you know, don't want you guys to hate me, so spoilers abound here. At any rate, I am going to be going out of order as per usual just because I, I just watched the episode so I'll be working my way backwards as we go. So, okay. Okay. So, of course, we, we start off the episode and Dexter is, you know, he's rigorously cleaning his boat. And finally we see Harry again. You know, Harry has been a lot less prevalent this season. And I think the reason for that is because Dexter, you know, he's in new territory. He's kind of on his own and he's trying to own things in a different way. You know, we kind of forget that Harry isn't a standalone character because he's always just kind of there over the shoulder. You know, we, we forget that he's a part of Dexter's mind and Dexter's way of thinking has changed. Uh, significantly since the show started so so you know Dexter's like okay I'm turning a new leaf everything is great things are good with Deborah and you know Har or Harry is kind of kind of nagging like you know she didn't she didn't accept you and then Dexter's like well she's stronger than you ever were that kind of thing and so it's it's almost like Deborah, you know, is starting to tangibly take the place of Harry in some ways. And I think that Harry is going to interject in places where, uh, you know, where Deborah can't touch. And what's interesting about this episode is, you know, we see Deborah backing off in so many different ways, and we see her coming onto Dexter's side in a very different way because you know we we started off the um the season and she had opened her home to Dexter and she was trying to get him through like this this kind of a uh, 12-step process of uh, healing him and now she's come to a point where she doesn't even want to know she doesn't want to know because I think, I think that those uh, crazy little feelings of hers are coming back to the forefront. All you, all you Debster holics, d just be honest with me. Were you freaking out a little bit? I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I, I enjoy the idea of Dexter and Deborah together romantically. If you disagree, it's totally cool. You know, there, there's some cool tension going on between Dexter and Hannah, so I'm, I'm getting that vibe. I feel you there. But I, I do ultimately have a lot of feelings in myself for Dexter and Deborah, and, um, <laughs> and there were some very, very strong vibes of, you know, we see for the first time Deborah is relenting and she's looking back at the good memories, you know. Uh, Dexter said that she stopped really digging into the past, which I think is interesting because there's still some territory that hasn't been explored. For instance, you know, season three, Miguel Prado, a, a lot of people have kind of kicked the dust back over that, so to speak, but you know, there's also the whole Lumen ordeal as well, which I think would be interesting for them to talk about, but it seems like that's um, kind of being put back elsewhere. So we'll see if that emerges, but you know, at, at this point it looks like Deborah is she knows what she wants to know and she's not digging anymore she doesn't want to dig in fact she she wants to reconstruct Dexter in in a new way she wants to reconstruct him in light of what she knows now in a way that she can love and support because she doesn't want to be constantly at odds with him I mean can you imagine uh yeah but 
oh my goodness, the, uh, <laughs> I was dying, um, the very end, as well as the scene when they're in the motel, um, hiding out from Isaac, who has made his intentions known to Dexter in a very interesting way. I will get back to that, I promise, I promise. But, um, I was just dying, I was like, what's going on? They're sleeping in the same room. I mean, I didn't think they were gonna sleep together, but, um, but you could just tell that uh, Deborah's in a very fragile place, and she's thinking back to their vacations to Myrtle Beach, and you know she's remembering how she would always, um, she would always try and run after Dexter, and he would he would always be watching her. You know she was remembering that, um, and he said that he wanted to make sure that she wouldn't drown, and she was like, "You're my hero," and I would just. <laughs> I died a little bit. I mean, it's just, it's been, it, this episode was really cathartic for me in that finally there is, you know, they're reestablishing an intimacy that they had completely, you know, abolished and overturned at the beginning of the season and for good reason. But it was just so incredibly just poignant and, um, and moving to just watch that unfold and bless them both freaking Jennifer Carpenter and Michael C. Hall all of my kisses and hugs and every piece of me I love them I love it all and so that was that was a really just cool and intimate moment like seeing them uh, reflect back on a happy memory and then returning to that same memory at the end and you know I'm getting way ahead of myself as you can see my uh, my focuses are kind of lopsided but um, get back to that, we gotta go back to Isaac because, uh, you know, I saw the two sneak peeks that had been released for this episode before. Okay, I'm really warm, so I'm taking this off. Ah, too many, too many emotions coursing through my veins and making my blood boil and stuff of that nature. So, <laughs> anyhow, so we find Isaac and he is friggin' sitting in Dexter's apartment just with his, uh, his fine uh, spread of um, torture devices. At first I thought it was kind of another one of those scenes of like, you know, like when Deborah first discovered all of Dexter's kill tools and stuff, but I believe that those were in fact Isaac's tools and he was ready to um, make some potentially bloody art of a, another bloody artist of ours whom we know and love very well. So, I think it was really, it was really clever what Dexter did. Um, he, he was really playing him hard. I, I really liked just the, the intrigue and the kind of strategy that was really interwoven into this episode, the way that um, Dexter led him off to a public place, you know, kind of diffuse the potentially uh, lethal situation. And that whole phone exchange, I, I really like that because we get a strong sense of, um, a stronger sense of who Isaac is, what he's about. And he's got, um, you know, he's, he reveals that he has this vendetta against the, you know, against Miami Metro as a whole. And I think that really he's just trying to dig into Dexter. Because, you know, then Isaac mentions, you know, the lieutenant sister of Dexter's. And Dexter's automatically just like, boom, <laughs> shut down right there. You know, he goes, he's kind of playing along, you know, they're kind of, they're kind of sniping back and forth. And he's like, no, this is no mess territory. And, um, and so I, I think that... I think that uh, Isaac is trying to, you know, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, that kind of thing, because he knows that Dexter has an affinity for Deborah, and he feels that it is only it is only fair to jeopardize uh, Dexter's love when his own love was jeopardized. And you know, I'm starting to think that Isaac might, in fact, be a gay character, and that uh, Victor was his lover. I wasn't sure at first. I thought. Um, I thought that Victor might have been his son or something like that, but you know, I kind of, I kind of pick up a, a teeny little vibe. It's just coming up on my radar a little bit, little bit. They, there was something very special between them, something that was um, really, you know, that's really compelling Isaac in a powerful way to do what he's seeking to do. And so then, um, then going back to Hannah McKay. So she's helping Miami Metro find the bodies that she and Wayne had buried in the Miami area. And it's, and it's really interesting just how quickly, you know, Dexter peels away that mask that she's got on, you know. Very quickly he notices that she is, you know, instead of looking back like, 
shuddering and with fear as she's recalling everything that happens there is a nostalgia and he and he notices that right away makes makes sense you know he's he's got that uh, he's got the eye for the dark passengers you know he's he's ready to pick that stuff up and so he very quickly figures out from some of the bodies that they uncover that um, one of them was not in fact killed by Wayne but had to have been taken care of by someone smaller younger and less experienced and who was nonetheless really seeming to en enjoy herself and uh, Dexter immediately you know he's he's not beating around the bush like he knows that Hannah's lying and he conveys that to her you know he kind of toys with her she toys back you know she's like girls gotta protect herself and you know that kind of <laughs> you know she she's playing with him he's playing with her and uh, as we saw in the little uh, sneak peek for next week's episode, it looks like Dexter is going to try to romantically get close to her in order to take her out. Because while it may seem that she's relatively harmless and she's just kind of flirty and playful and, and fun, you know, and she's, she's put that behind her, but it's something that she nonetheless uh, has no remorse over, you know, he, he feels that that she needs to be his next target. And I think that she's going to uh, compound that with some uh, feminine difficulties, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but I'm, I'm really excited to see how that all plays out. And then as soon as Dexter is done at the scene with Hannah McKay, and really you can see that glint in her eye, you know, she, she has her own dark passenger that is very different from any of the others that we've encountered in the show so far. So, then of course Isaac is chilling in the corner and Dexter knows it's go time. And uh, having done a little bit of his homework, uh, Dexter, you know, Dexter's being trailed by Isaac and Dexter walks into uh, this bar and I believe that it's owned by the, is it the Colombians? That, the, um, that Isaac's clan have an issue? I think it's the Colombians if I'm wrong. Oh well, what is? Uh, we're gonna go with the Colombians. So he walks in there, you know, like, uh, sworn enemy territory. Isaac doesn't know this, obviously. You know, Dexter just kind of waltzes in and then goes, shimmies out through the bathroom. And then when Isaac goes in to go after him, Dexter can only assume he's gonna get taken care of, but it looks like we have the mother flipping Terminator on our hands, okay? <laughs> so Dexter knows that he is dealing with something far more severe than he ever could have imagined. This guy is tactical and he knows just what to do in the heat of the moment <laughs> and uh, that's kind of not really a, a positive trait in Dexter's eyes. He likes to have control and he likes to deal with people whom he can control and he sees that Isaac is just a little bit beyond that. He is a very worthy opponent, kind of Trinity-like in his in his cunning. Um, and I was really surprised, you know, at how swiftly, you know, Miami Metro took him in, all that stuff. He still, but you know, he's still putting on that positive charm, and you know, he's not gonna talk. He's just doing his own thing. We know that there is more yet to come, that we are unsure of yet. But what we can be sure is that, like Isaac himself said, this isn't over. And, uh, you know, when Dexter is talking to Isaac after he's he's been imprisoned, you know, um, they're talking through the glass. And uh, we, we, again, get a bigger sense of who Isaac is and what he is capable of and what has made him who he is, you know. And we see why it is that revenge is so potent to him and it's so intoxicating and he's driven by it. And there's no way he's gonna give it up. You know, Dexter wants to make sure that it's done because he wants to make sure that he and Deborah, Deborah most of all, are safe. But that just ain't the way that uh, Isaac is gonna roll. And I think that the show would be far more boring if that uh, wasn't the way that he rolled. So I'm really excited to see, you know, just what is going to happen. And just as a little tip, I know from an interview with Jennifer Carpenter, she's been repeatedly saying that the eighth episode, Argentina, is her favorite of the season. And that the season finale is insane. Her exact words. So, uh, brace yourselves. Um, Anyway, so 
we we go back to Deborah, you know, and and uh, in this particular episode, Batista is he is pursuing you know knowledge of who it was that really killed Mike because he does not believe that the guy that um, uh, Isaac Sirko's group framed, he does not believe that that is the one who done it, and <laughs> rightfully so. So he's coming and petitioning to um, uh, blah, blah, petitioning to Deborah. And it's, you know, her response to him, it was just so incredible because she's like, you know, one of the most important and hardest things I've learned about being a lieutenant is knowing when to fucking back down. And it's like, you know, that directly parallels this entire experience that she's had with Dexter and it shows that she so desires, you know, she so desires to be at peace with Dexter at last that she is willing to, you know, just kind of break her own personal code and it's so hard to see Batiste so frustrated because he's right but ah, <laughs> Deborah's leading him away and she's also in the position of of course the Bay Harbor Butcher case is back and so she's having to kind of play with with LaGuardia through that and you know keep everything under her thumb she takes the the photos from the investigation that they had opened you know of the the wedding where Dexter had been where he uh, snagged one of his victims and Deborah directly intervenes to get those photos. And then in the end, she comes uh, back to Dexter's apartment. You know, they're done with the whole motel business. And she's just like, you know what? I like, look, this is what happened. Be glad I got involved in this. Be glad I stepped in because I saved you. And I think it's kind of an interesting reversal because earlier Dexter's talking about how, um, or she talks about how Dexter had, had saved her, you know, like, back when they were younger and at the beach and Dexter was always watching to make sure that she wouldn't drown. And so, you know, they returned to that whole beach story and I was just dying. I was like, okay, there's like five minutes left. What's going on? Um, just what a beautiful and just heartbreaking scene because, you know, she's talking about how Dexter, you know, they would chase one another and he was always just out of her reach. And, and Dexter is like, you know, you'd never take your flippers off. And just all the all the metaphors, it was very well played and very torturous for us as an audience. So kudos to you, Showtime, because uh, it's a good kind of torturous just to see how they are circling one another. And I, I feel that Deborah is almost on the verge of telling Dexter how she really feels. And I think that she was trying to use uh, that conversation um, as a grounds upon which to do that. but things just fell ever so slightly short you know she's feeling just the weight of, of every insecurity and you know Dexter not knowing where she's coming from he's burning the pictures that Deborah had given him and he's talking about you know he alone is gonna be the one to swim deep he alone will bear his secret to keep Deborah safe at the shore and I just love this episode. I love everything that was developed. There are so many different plots and you know, they're all starting to converge. There's like four or five main plots right now, but they're all of equal importance. And we also can't forget Quinn. We knew that Quinn was gonna do something dumb, AKA getting involved with the stripper. You should've listened to T-Pain. But uh, <laughs> so we're gonna see some more issues arise with that, you know. Um, the, the operator of the foxhole is going to try and persuade Quinn to either keep his lips sealed or deliver false information. But, um, and Quinn doesn't want to be the dirty cop anymore. You know, he's got dirty money in his hands, but he doesn't want to be the dirty cop. So, uh, is he going to use the hand sanitizer and meet a sorry fate or what? So there's a lot to look forward to with next week. So. Let me know what you guys thought of this episode. This review is probably really long, but thanks so much for bearing with me. If you want to talk about anything, Dexter, anything, anything, truly, I love my viewers. Please follow me on Tumblr or Facebook or Twitter. There are links in the description. And I hope to have more music up on my channel soon, but unfortunately, I've just been super busy with school, being a student and responsible and stuff. Kind of sucks, so. Thanks so much for watching this review. Let me know everything that you guys thought. You know, if you agree, disagree with me, by all means, you know, just share in the comments. I love to talk all the theories and just take everything from every angle. But me and my little Debster heart is <laughs> very excited by this episode. So let me know what you guys thought. Bless each and every one of you and I will be back in the blink of an eye.